It's locked. <coughs> oh, don't worry. It isn't COVID. I got a strange case of the Nancy Drew flu. It's highly contagious. Are you ready to catch a case? <laughs> Nancy Drew, Travis J. Space. <laughs> Trevor J's space here on YouTube and welcome back to another fabulous episode of Nancy Drew and the Haunted Carousel. Uh huh? What the hell? <laughs> oh, we're being interrupted by uh, whatever the heck this is. Oh. Okay. Back to the top of the script. Yes. The Haunted Carousel. Is this still recording? Okay, good. The Haunted Carousel. It's very sad that a carousel horse has to be stolen. These horses, they, they spend their entire lives being beautiful and ridden for 90 years just for some inconsiderate, ignorant imbecile to take that horse away from its pride and joy to serve others. It's, it's really a tragedy. <laughs> oh, I can't keep that up. That's funny. And plus I got something in my eye. I put my eyeliner on too quickly today. Um, anyways, yes, welcome back. I'm really excited. I'm really happy. I'm squeezing my hands so hard because I'm just so excited to jump into this. I am, once again, I just want to say this now, that I'm really grateful to all y'all <laughs> for, because, you know, the choice of this mystery, and I mentioned it in the first episode because it's very important, but I am very grateful because remember, y'all chose this mystery. This wasn't me. I didn't just say, you know what? We're going to do the haunted carousel. That was all you. Y'all voted. We did like seven phases. Sorry, <laughs> four phases of voting over like four or five days. So you guys chose us. And I'm reminding you guys that because I'm very grateful you did. I'm very happy and appreciative because we've done a lot of scary Nancy Drews. And a lot of those uh, I just kind of wanted to do because... And also, I interacted with a lot of you guys, Red Wolf, <laughs> and, you know, some of you guys mentioned, well, a lot of you guys, especially Red Wolf, y'all were mentioning Curse of Blackbird Manor. So we took that route the last time because, you know, it was it was kind of refreshing to hear what you guys wanted. And so I thought, okay, after Curse of Blackmore, I'm going to make it a, an official, like, vote. But I'm just happy y'all are giving me an easier time here. I'm actually having a lot of fun because there's an arcade and we can collect things. I love collecting souvenirs and the coins and oh, and our brass ring from the carousel itself. So I'm, I'm very happy and grateful and just, yeah. Thank you guys for <laughs> voting to take it easy on me this time. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can take another jump scare. My poor little heart, my yeah. There may be some in this. I don't know. It's been a it's been a many 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 moons since I played this game. So last time I played this, I was playing it on a white computer monitor that was the size of like five of my heads. You know, my feet dangle. Well, my feet were dangling off the office chair because I was always a tall kid. <laughs> I was always like six foot. <laughs> So none of that, but I was a, I was a just, if you could imagine a little, little tiny Travis at the computer. <gasps> Why? How do I do this? Mom, I need your help. <laughs> and then mom sits next to me and she does the remote. And I just sit and watch and tell her what to do. Yeah, that was actually, side note, that was actually something. I don't know if I ever explained to any of you guys the, my backstory with Nancy Drew um, mystery 
games. Nancy Drew, period, but Nancy Drew PC games were my first introduction to the Nancy Drew world back in 2002 or three when I was in the first grade. I was about, I guess, five or six, maybe seven, not even. Um, and my mom had bought Nancy Drew message in the Haunted Mansion, in a Haunted Mansion. And uh, yeah, my sister, my older sister got home earlier. So she had a ch <laughs> she had been playing it as soon as she got home because mom was like, yeah, yeah, go. So by the time I got home, I was really excited and I had to wait for my sister's show to come on so I could hop on. And But from that moment, I just felt, I was very scared of Nancy Drew Best John Mansion. And the proof is everywhere. You know, y'all go to the jump scares, jump scares of San Francisco on my channel. You'll see even years later, this, the game still gives me chills. It still gives me nightmares. A lot of the Nancy Drew games do. <laughs> That's the power of Nancy Drew and her interactive and the whole bit. So, but yeah, because I was so scared, I couldn't sleep at night. So my mom said, well, you know what? Then I'm going to have to play them with you. You're probably not old enough to play these games. <laughs> which at the time it did say for adventure girls I think 13 and up and I didn't care if it said girls I I mean I, I never really identified even at that age so I was like yeah I am an underage amateur sleuthy girl ready to jump into this but I wasn't so mommy dearest sat next to me through almost 10 15 years of mysteries Side by side, we played, and she clicked, and she did all the stuff, and I just sat there and yelled her ear off, annoyingly, telling her and dictating where to go and what to do. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Most times I was right. <laughs> Most times I was on to something. So, but yeah, that's that's my touching uh, history, I guess, or, or the uh, beginning of my journey with Nancy Drew. It started with having to have a chaperone, a companion to keep me from feeling scared or, you know, any anticipation for jump scares was kind of ridden thanks to, thanks to having that, that guidance. So yeah, it's, it's kind of touching. It's a beautiful story. And I, you know, it's interesting because I go online on Instagram and I see you guys, I follow a lot of you guys on there and I see a lot of people sharing their stories too, or even just reflecting back on, you know, the first time I played Secret of Shadow Ranch and, and just explaining their stories in detail. I love that. I just love that. I'm a perception person. So you give me a perception, I'll, I'll load it into the drive and I'll just, I'll see what you're seeing. It's like putting a DVD into the DVD player and you click play, boom, you know, I just see it. So I love that. It makes me warm inside. And uh, I thought it was about time I shared mine, unless I already have. I might have in our first mystery. I don't know. But if I haven't, there it is on record. <laughs> uh, yeah. So side note over. Um, let's jump right into this because I'm so eager, eager to get those awards from the, uh, the arcade. And I'm talking about the shark. There. Wow. All I can remember is the shark. Anyways, <laughs> y'all know me, my head is going, so my short-term memory is slowly becoming a lot like our friend Dory's. So just like Dory, I'm gonna just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim, ha, 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 ha. I like to swimming. When you want to swim, you've got to, oh my god, that's enough. <laughs> I don't have a marlin here, so... This random arm is mine. Oh, you can see. <laughs> All right, guys. So first and foremost, before we jump into it, as per always, thank you guys so much for coming together today to share the mutual deep love and admiration and appreciation for all things Nancy Drew. That is what um, I'm here to do is to bring that love and all of that kind of nostalgia and essence here together, a place where we can all just come together and feel good, nostalgic and happy and uh, and work together. That's the biggest part. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I appreciate each and every one of you, even if there's only 10 of you, 20 of you, 30 of you. Meh, that's a little high now. If it got to, you know, I can't, I can't, I don't know if I'd be able to do astronomical amounts of fans because I'd, I'd feel guilty because we can't, you know, this is what I like right now. I, I'm not popular. I'm not famous. I, I don't really want to be because then it keeps a low brow. It keeps it like a small little community and we can actually chat. I can actually see your comments and we can actually 
start a friendship, you know, and a rapport and work together. You know, if there's thousands of comments, I would, I'm going to be honest, I'd probably miss 80% of them. So I'm just grateful for this moment right now. And, um, yeah, I like it this way. So thanks for being here. Love you. Um, and before we begin, of course, do you have your tea? Do you have it? I sure hope you do because, uh, I mean, how do you go with that? Or your coffee or whatever that, you no, know, that glass, ah, martini. Oh, cheers to that. It must be five o'clock where you are. <laughs> great. Great, great, great. And, uh, you got your blanket. Fabulous. Maybe it's hot where you are. So if you got your fan, <laughs> good. And last but not least, the most important question always, 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 always is, are you cozy? Are you comfortable? Are you feeling that chill down your, that warm chill down your spine? You're snuggling in. Good. I feel it too. <laughs> I get goose. My hairs are standing up. Uh, okay. So without further ado, let's just jump right in then and uh, get to the arcade. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I do have a page set up now because remember in the last episode, I didn't set that up. I do have it set up now. We don't really have many clues yet or any kind of puzzle. So I don't have too much written down at the moment. And let's make sure we get that timer going too. How about them apples? All right. You ready? You are you ready? <laughs> Great. Great. So am I. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Phony. Okay. So... <laughs> Oh, I guess I could go to the laptop to see what we should be doing. Because, I mean, my instinct, I was just going to jump right to the arcade. Actually, I was going to go to Security Guard Harlan to see if I could reload my card. Our fun card. Because our fun cards only got one credit, I think. I'm not sure. I wish it would tell me. Just a little indicator. Mm. Okay. Translate the note I found in Joy's office. Find out why my... Access card won't open. Yes, times three. Yes, I have. Uh, we had this issue in the last episode, didn't we, guys? We couldn't open anything with the access card. So, and get the Barnacle Blast game fixed. Oh, cool. We're gonna. Okay, so there's something we can fix because you know we want to go to the arcade to begin with. So maybe we should go there to fix the game. However, we haven't introduced ourselves to uh, the other two people that work here. I think it's Ingrid and Patrick. Patrick Chan. <laughs> or no, I feel like I'm getting that name wrong. I think I think that's a is, is it? <laughs> I think that's a figure skater. I'm pretty sure it's a Canadian figure skater. Ooh. All right. Well before we go, let's order some more food. Gotti. You can't do detective work. Operator. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Can't do detective work on an empty stomach. Ow. Ooh. Weird. Okay. So we got the hamburger. No, no, sorry. We had the pasta and veggie platter last time. So we'll save dessert for last. Let's do the hamburger platter. I'd like platter. to order the hamburger platter with milk instead of a soft drink. One hamburger Good platter choice. with moo juice. It'll be that <laughs> for you. Anything else? One hamburger platter with moo juice. That'll be that of you. Anything else? <laughs> Uh, That's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> I can't get over these. Oh, oh, I keep forgetting it's instant. Ooh, Curse of Blackmore Manor. They gave you some time. These people, these people are quick with their order. Well, I guess it's right in the building. In Curse of Blackmore, they actually deliver the. F oh. oh, do you see this? Oh, that burger is like. Mm. Oh my god, and the fries. Now you see, I would be a little upset my fries were on top of the ketchup, but we'll let it go this time. And the milk in this cup, they really appreciate their customers here. I love this. You know how badly I'm living through this. Like, I feel like I'm staying here myself with you guys. Like, I want to stay here. <laughs> I wish this were a real thing. I always imagine in the afterlife that it's just an infinite amount of possibilities, like just kind of scenarios and stuff of your own creation. So I totally know that in my afterlife, like this always pops in my head, then in my afterlife, I'm gonna be like living this out in real, in real life. 
every detail, every Nancy Drew mystery, every time. So anytime you're playing Nancy Drew, if I'm not here and you're playing Nancy Drew, you'll feel my spirit. That's for dang sure. <laughs> All right, let's dig in because we got a lot of games to play, like a lot, because we've only got the seahorse token and the anchor token. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Nancy didn't even really, uh, she's not a big fan of the ketchup. Okay. You know what? Neither am I. I don't, I know unpopular opinion, but I don't, I don't have ketchup with my fries. Do y'all, do y'all have ketchup with your, with your fries? I don't know if that's just a, an American thing. Uh, but I don't, I don't have ketchup with my fries. I love salt. I like a bit of pepper, Himalayan salt, a little bit of pepper, you know, I like to dip them in mayo. That's good. Okay. So, we're back at the arcade. Huh, how am I gonna fix you? Oh, here's the prizes. Yes, so the shark, we can't get that. This thing, which looks like maybe it pops out or something, I don't know. A boat and a harmonica. I definitely want the harmonica. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, well, Let's go introduce ourselves to Ingrid Engineering Workshop. This is the, uh, oh, this reminds me of The Sims. Sims 1, mind you. The uh, dolphin shrub you can put in there. And the flowers, too, actually. Is this just going to open or am I going to need a... Oh, we're going to need some fingerprints. I spy on the need for fingerprints in the future. Mm-hmm. With some dusting, I'm sure we're going to come across a turkey baster <laughs> and some ominous white powdery substance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nah, it ain't that kind of game. <laughs> Maybe some bacon. bacon. I'm, I'm talking bacon powder. Come on, y'all. <laughs> looking for someone? Oh, yes, I'm looking for you. I love her. I love her tone. She's a very calm individual. If you're looking for, I'm look, if you're Ingrid Corey, not anymore. If you're Ingrid Corey, not anymore. That's me. Ordinarily, I don't do the hands-on work, and I'd be able to shake your hand, Ms. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have picked the other. Ashima says, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Drew, Nancy Drew. I'm helping Ms. Santos discover what's behind these carousel hauntings. Okay if I ask you some questions? Sure. Oh my, you've got B3 issues. Oh, oh, do I sense an empath here, a clairvoyant, someone who's spiritually open? I'm, I'm sensing it. I do. Vitamin B3, niacin. Okay. The vibe you're giving off oh. tells me you're low. Nothing that some natural peanut butter on a slice of whole wheat bread once a day won't fix. Oh, I like Ingrid. I am a big fan of Ingrid Corey. And I know, I'm sorry, you guys. I do have to keep a professional mindset. She's still sussy. Even though I don't know anything yet, but <laughs> we don't know nothing, but she's still sussy. But I gotta say, love her already because we're we gonna vibe well. We're gonna vibe well. Uh, Harla Bishop mentions some of your beliefs concerning food were somewhat... Okay, it's a nice Harlan way of Bishop putting it. Harla Bishop mentioned some of your beliefs concerning food <laughs> were somewhat unconventional. It just seems obvious to me that what you eat, as well as the psycho-spiritual conditions under which you eat it, results in what you are, that's all. Yes! Yes! Wow! Oh my goodness, we have all been sleeping on In Ingrid Corey here and her and her philosophy. I love her! Girl, I've been trying to preach stuff like that for so long, but you, you are the OG, you... You've been up here, what, 2003, 2004, preaching this? Oh, I love Ingrid Corey. I'm a new fan of yours. And she's an artistic engineer. I mean, come on. That's awesome. I love your life. Uh, are you sure you're an engineer? How long have you worked? Yeah. Have you worked at Captain's Cove for very long? A little less than two years. Okay. I started out in maintenance and worked my way up. I've held the supervisory hmm. position for the last 10 months. Good for you. Good for you. Okay, that was an important question because if you guys remember, the heist took place, I think they said 88, late 80s. So she wasn't around then. 
So a little less sussy. She's not up there on my list and I'm not being biased. That's not because of her personality and that we are very similar, her and I, but you know, <laughs> that, that does kind of disqualify a few things. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Miss Santos asked me to figure out why weird things have been happening around here lately. What's to figure out? Someone stole a horse off the carousel and now the park is cursed. <laughs> I love how matter of fact she says that. Yes. Ah, oh, can we be friends? Please. Please, Ingrid. Could, can someone make like an Ingrid Corey Instagram page where they're acting as Ingrid Corey, or is there already one out there? Listen, <laughs> let me catch up. I'm going to screen record this segment for a highlight on my Instagram in the future, future, because this episode won't come out. What's today? August 27th. So yeah, it won't come out till like Monday, the 29th, and then the highlight might not come out on my Instagram until like the 20, the 30th, or September. So. I'm speaking into the future, but if y'all are watching this highlight, comment below if there's an Ingrid Corey account, because she's like my new favorite character. Oh man, I was sleeping on you. I love you. Uh, but you're still sus. <laughs> uh, so you think the cursing is real? Why would someone steal a carousel horse? Yeah. Money. I hear they can be very valuable. This is true. This is true. And especially being 90, 90 years old, it's a, it's an antique off the get go. So yeah, very true. Uh, could I see the blueprints for the roller coaster? Could I see the blueprints of the roller coaster so you can show me exactly where on the track it stopped? I've mm -hmm. looked all over for those blueprints and can't find them anywhere. I'm sure one of the other engineers knows where they are, but I'm afraid I don't. Sorry. Hmm. Interesting. Who's got their hands on the blueprints? Obviously. Pardon, ex pardon me, excuse me. Obviously, the culprit is the one who has the blueprints. Because I'm sure the blueprints helped them to sabotage the roller coaster. So, I guess, I guess it makes sense she wouldn't have them. Uh, <clears throat> still sus. <laughs> How well do you know Harlan Bishop? How well do you know Harlan Bishop? I know he's an ex-bouncer from Trenton. Oh. I also know it drives him nuts that this is one of the few places in the park he doesn't have a key for. <laughs> uh, yeah, I noticed that. Okay, so, right. when we Before we walked in, Ingrid's got her own keypad. She doesn't have one of these, or down here, or down there in her inventory. One of those... Uh, access passes this is the one of the only places that you get in through a code so huh so it upsets him he can't get in here maybe i'm taking that too seriously but it's worth uh thinking about that harlan doesn't like he can't get in here however he does have like i said in the first episode that dewey um from scream officer dewey vibe you know so it would make sense that he's just kind of he's aggravated about it because he's he wants to be at the top, you know. Um, I'd like to... Oops. What did I do there? I'd like to take a closer look at the roller coaster, but the access card reader doesn't work. It's got this I'd like to take tag. a closer look at the roller coaster, but the access card reader doesn't work. It's got this red tag on it. Right. I was in the process of upgrading its main circuitry board. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until I finish here. Unless you'd like to do it for me. Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> I'm game, but needless to say, I've never done it before. It's not exactly brain surgery. Hmm. All you have to do is follow the schematic inside the reader. Here's the new macro resistor. Oh. When you see the board, you'll be able to see where it goes. You'll need to oh. solder it in place. Oh, thank you. Which means you're going to have to get my soldering gun from Elliot Chen. Elliot, Here's not the engineering Patrick. handbook I put together. <laughs> If you have questions about park-related electronics, it'll answer them. Keep it as long as you like. Okay. When you're all done, oh, thank remove you. the red tag and take it to Harlan. That way, he'll know it's safe to turn the power back on to the reader. Ah. That's not my cell phone. It must be yours. Are you going to answer it? No, that would be rude. I'll just call them back. So, once you get that tool from Elliot, you should be all set. Mm. Just when I think I've fallen over the moon, deeply, madly in love with this woman, she goes and proves just how considerate and lovingly 
kind and generous she is. This is something that has fallen off of. There's no etiquette anymore in our in our culture these days in our world, you know. And he's hearing this and seeing that, you know, how refreshing that is. That makes me want to cry. I'm very sensitive, you know, but that's just that's sweet. I wish we heard more of that in everyday life. She didn't even stutter when her phone rang. She just kept on. You were saying, <laughs> oh, I love you. Um, yes. Now, the access card doesn't really work anywhere. I don't seem to be having much luck using my access card. Am I doing something wrong? I deactivated most of the readers because of the shutdown. As oh. soon as I get done here, I'll get them online again. Sorry. Hey, That's if fair. you come across a pair of pliers, hang on to them, okay? Mine are missing. Someone must have walked off with them. Okay. Oh, I love this girl's narrative, tone of her voice. Do Lovely. you mind having to work during the shutdown? Not a bit. Keeping those card readers functioning is practically a full-time job all by itself. Mm. Plus, I happen to adore my job. Oh. <laughs> and if you love your job, you never work a day in your life. Oh, I love this woman. I've probably said that about a record-breaking time of like 8,000 times. But 8,001, I love this woman. But you're still sus. <laughs> Any advice on how to go about fixing the midway game that's broken? It needs to be reprogrammed. Open wow. up the back. Should be some instructions on the clipboard. Check that handbook I gave you if they're too cryptic for you. But you'll also need the plug-in keyboard. And unfortunately, I have no idea where it is. One of my guys probably left it in the park somewhere. Okay. Thanks for your help. Remember, niacin. Niacin, right. B3 is low. Maybe my B3 is low, too. I might need some niacin in my life. <laughs> So I know my energy is always very low, but I didn't realize that might come off in my vibe. Boy, oh boy, what a big workshop. So much to see. So little time. <laughs> oh, there that's part of the ride, I think. The, sh the roller coaster. Okay. Wowza. I'm not sure we should go through her stuff while she's here. Do you mind? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Oh, that must be her daughter. Poor Sinian. Pandora 2X. Ooh. Ooh, maybe she wants a new car. She working for Oh, wait a minute. See, this is where I got to split the personal and the professional. Because we're, we're detectives, right? And someone stole a very valuable horse off a carousel. Which may or may not be full of jewelry or diamonds or something valuable, according to that incident in 1988. You see where I'm going with this? Someone stole that horse. They could use the money to buy a nice new Porsche. You know what I'm saying? However, I was about to cut myself off there because if you guys remember, when we looked at the crime scene, whoever got rid of the horse didn't really care about doing it clean and neatly. You know what I mean? It was more like it was ripped out of there or, you know, they got the screws out and made a dash for it and just kind of left the mess. Even the wood chippings. I don't think an artistic engineer with her calm state of mind, like her you know, her vibe would do that. I feel like she'd clean up out. I feel like she's smarter than that. So I don't know. Could be sus, you know, could be that sh this is her dream and the only way to get is to steal the horse. So she'd steal the horse. But I mean, I don't think she knowing kind of how she is, who she is, an idea of who she is that she would, uh, she would follow through in such a, in such a upkempt manner, you know? She seems more professional than that. And yes, earlier I was mentioning, <laughs> this is the computer I played Nancy Drew on growing up <laughs> back in 2003. Okay. All right. Well, there, for the amount of stuff there is in here, there really isn't much to look at, which also leads me to believe maybe she's not so sus. Quack. <laughs> quack. <laughs> quack. 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 <laughs> All right. 
Bad food, no. Good food, yes. <laughs> oh, I love her. Okay. So, last but not least, we need to... Elliot. Yes, Captain's Cove Art Studio. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hang on, I'll be right with you. Take your time. Oh! Uh oh! Oh, sorry. Out. And do not come back unless and until Joy Trent calls me. Okay? Okay. Oh! Well, talk about uh, starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> Oopsie. Sorry. Uh, yeah. We're not gonna rush to to talk to Joy about that, because I, I just want to get this machine fixed. I want to win some toys. He seemed very busy, didn't he? Oh, here we go. Okay. But can I get into this thing? Is my access card... Okay, it's gonna let me. Look at this little computer. Hmm. Got this done, but had to fight the power relay switch to work right. Nick F. Okay. Programming upgrade. After successfully upgrading the hardware on the Tahoe circuit board. The Krollmeister arcade game will not function and will display an error message on the front panel video screen. Okay. The hardware upgrade must be added to the... Oh, we need a keyboard for this, don't we? Uh, arcade game code. In the back of each Krollmeister arcade game is a small video screen that contains the programming code. Use a Krollmeister portable keyboard to plug into the monitor and type in the code upgrade. This can be done by simply adding the word super to the upgrade function and entering the Krollmeister arcade game serial number as the parameter. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. For example, if the upgrade function was called ping and the serial number was UB4700, the new function would be super ping. Uh, okay. The keyboard is missing. Right. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure where we find the keyboard. I think we should talk to Harlan first. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Hey! Hey, Nancy, what's up? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm afraid I got on the wrong foot. I'm afraid I got off on the wrong foot. I just said that earlier, too. I spilled paint all over something he'd been working on. Ooh, not good. The guy's already about a month behind in his work. Oh, dear. That's really not good, then. Yikes. Ooh. We are going to have to profusely apologize, because that's, that's very inconsiderate of us to just mosey on and, um... Oh, yeah, any idea why he's so far behind? Any idea why he's so far behind? He's a procrastinator, doesn't really like to work, so he does whatever he can to avoid it. Puts things off to the last minute. Me, I get stuff done right away. You do too, I'll bet. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. Interesting. Do you notice a, a, a pattern here? A recurring narrative. Uh... Joy, I'm not sure if she said she enjoyed her job, but she's here because her f it's her father's business, was once her father's business. So there's her obligation and her passion, right? So I assume she loves her job because she's working through her father, father's work. So that's Joy. We talked to Ingrid, and Ingrid has mentioned that she loves, adores her job, quote unquote. Harlan has now said he likes to finish... Uh, get stuff done right away which shows that he may not love his job which i think he does because like i said this is like dewey through and through dewey from scream he, he definitely loves his job you can just tell and he likes to get stuff done right away this other patrick fella however though or not pat i keep calling him patrick i already forget his name oh <gasps> wow anyways that individual we're being told now, leaves everything off to the last minute, and doesn't seem to like his work. So what is he doing instead of working on what he should be working on? Right? What's what's going on there? Hmm. He does seem very messy, too, from that little glimpse we got of him. 
So it makes sense if he left the crime scene messy. You know what I'm saying? There, there's a lot of connections there. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I try. Has he always been behind? <laughs> I guess he was doing okay up until about a month ago. Way I hear it, if he doesn't get caught up like fast, he's going to be waving bye-bye like soon. Another motivation to steal from your work. Valuable stuff at that, not just like a chocolate bar, like maybe a hundred thousand to, I don't know, ballpark fifty, five hundred thousand dollars worth of, you know, antique, well, an antique horse, assuming there's jewels in it. I just keep assuming that there's hidden jewels in there. We don't need to see that again. I'll see you around. All right. Go get him. Go get him, tiger. All right. So. Please don't open that. Sorry, bad habit. <laughs> We're just touching everyone's personal belongings today. Oh! He didn't refill our card. Maybe we have to use all the, the things first. So, I have one of these. How do we get a mermaid again? Oh, right. The shell and the mermaid are through here. Okay, well, in the meantime, let's... Ding, ding. I I I did. Oh, <gasps> yay! What is this? Hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> I like that. You know what? We'll probably have to use that to hit something or knock something over eventually, or turn something on or off. I don't know. It's gonna be useful though. Oh. Ah, okay. R one ten. Ah, this, uh, I am a non engineer by any means. This is whew, some tricky stuff. Okay. Dress code. Circuits! Arp. Resistors, ohms. Let's just let's just do some trial and error here. Uh is it this one that's miss Ugh, sorry. The eyes. <laughs> okay. Yes, here we go. Better not take the tag until I fix this. Right, right. Okay. So. So. Ah. Hmm. However. Hmm. We, we don't have a s hmm. soldering. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have a. S Did I take it with me? Okay, good. We're gonna leave it in there. You know, I'm not much of an a uh, an engineer by any means, <laughs> so that's all a bit loop de loop for me. <laughs> that zebra, he looks like he's always laughing. <laughs> oh, oops, I keep getting eyeliner in my eyes. All right. So, yeah, see, here's the crime scene again. Very messy. Very, very messy. Whoever did that was very, very messy. And we can't get in here, right? That's still... Yeah. They're both locked right up. Moon glow. Okay. So nothing to see here. Was there any other toys or prizes I could redeem? Anchor. Oh, out of stock. Ugh! Wait. Is this an Easter egg? Sorry. <laughs> Do y'all know if that was an Easter egg? I feel like that could have been an Easter egg. Seems Easter egg worthy. All right, well, I'm not really sh sure. 
<sighs> I don't like that. And we can't get in here. Oh, we can! Is that y'all okay either this is part of the haunted house set that they didn't turn off what is that noise yeah th that's what I'd like to know too Nancy sounds like it's coming from below it does what the heck oh well there's the keyboard we needed but now I'm curious, what the heck is that? Someone is working on something. Okay. We're in a haunted house, so... I am keeping my wits about me here. Okay. 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 Okay, this guy's got a power outage chip, too, so he ain't gonna pop out and scare me. Which is probably a good thing, because he is looking mighty, mighty scary. Okay, just gotta figure out where we are here. Oh, there was a creak in the floor. Y'all hear that? That was us, but we might alert the person below. Just an old radiator. <gasps> Nancy. No, I don't think it was just an old radiator. I really don't think that's what we heard. That, that, no. No, that's, those were bangs, those were saws, those were hammers. Those were tools, honey. Oh, y'all see this? There's a divot in the floor here didn't see that last time huh that's interesting okay well and it creaks okay so that's the creak that's the creak is this panel here so it's obviously a loose a loose panel so someone might actually be underneath here working on something that's very ominous I mean I know the rides are shut down so you know I'm pretty I'm pretty pragmatic about things maybe because the uh, park is shut down they're using it as time to like you know fix their equipment or do like inspection and stuff like that maybe jeez okay but here's the thing if they are working on things, you know, benefit of the doubt, the park's closed, perfect time to either upgrade or fine tune or, you know, and just inspect the rides and the, and the, the, you know, the actual engineering behind it. Why are they doing it in secret? Why are they below under a secret hidden panel under the stage? That still seems very sus. I don't like that. I've got a chill down my... Now they're sandpapering. And banging with nails. Ugh, I don't like that. Okay. Alright. Well, let's go back to Joy. Maybe she can help us with our... Uh... uh access card. <gasps> oh. She's not here. Who are you? Oh! What are you doing? Oh, what the heck? <laughs> I said that over here on top of the cabinet. Huh? Oh. Oh, that's what was hiding under the... Keep going. Over here. <laughs> I see you. I see you. <laughs> Please identify yourself. I am Nancy Drew. <laughs> oh. I'm a detective named Nancy Drew, the and heck? you are? I am Miles, the Magnificent Memory Machine. Oh, okay. I receive and process video and audio input and make appropriate pre-programmed verbal responses. Ah! Oh. 
Well, that's interesting. Pretty high tech piece of equipment here. Uh, who programmed who programmed you? you? <laughs> it is my turn to ask a question. Okay. Nancy Drew. Fair enough. Why are you here when Joy is not? Oh. So is this Joy's security machine? Seems like. So she just reveals it when she leaves for the day or lunch or some. As a matter of fact, oh. Oh, Elliot Ch Elliot. Oh, always Patrick. Elliot Chen is kind of upset with me. Elliot Chen is kind of upset with me. I need to write her a note to call him. There is a pad for leaving messages on the desk. Okay. Now back to me asking you. <laughs> so who programmed you? Right. Responding yeah. to the non-joy entity is an unnecessary drain on my power unit oh. and is here to <gasps> court this allowed. What does that mean? Hello? Miles? <laughs> I guess it means he's not going to talk to me anymore. Oh, okay. Responding is an unnecessary drain on my power unit. Okay, but I don't understand. Responding is an <laughs> unnecessary drain on my power unit. <laughs> I thought maybe he would die. Or, like, his power would die, so then we're, we're good to snoop. You know what I mean? Hmm. Guess not. Can I go reach back there? Responding to oh. is an unnecessary drain on my power unit. <laughs> then go ahead, drain. <laughs> this is actually really neat, though. He's made out of what? This looks like an easy bake oven two tobacco smoking pipes, a uh, gramophone speaker, perhaps two headlights of some sort, a bicycle handlebar, and golf clubs for the feet. Oh, whoever made that. I really want to know who programmed him. Who made this? I would like to congratulate them. That's pretty cool. Oh, see? If I go in there right now, is he going to is he going to react and say, you're not allowed? Beep bop boop bop. <laughs> okay, let, let's, let's leave that alone for now. For now. I moved too fast there. Okay. Huh. I'm trying to stay vigilant. While also not looking suspicious. If this robot is advanced as he says he is. I can use this to leave a note me. for Joy to call Elliot. There you go. Ah, uh, gruff stuff, stationary. While you were occupied, Joy, please call Elliot C. I kind of hmm. Looks like Joy's a pencil chewer. Huh. An obvious sign of stress. Interesting. So she could be a little more sus now. Maybe she's resentful that her father was bought out and he was left broke and nobody helped him. Because the owner now had the opportunity and, according to Joy, had more than enough resources to help her father out of bankruptcy. And if there's genetics going on here, maybe her father's stress ate at his hell and could have been the cause, maybe, or part of a cause. I'm just, I'm hypo, I'm theorizing here. Maybe that excess amount of stress on him was what put him to the edge you know what I'm saying because if it is a genetic thing with the stress handling or the not being able to maybe this is where joy gets her pencil biting habits you know to, re to to relieve her stress it would make sense this could be aggravation you know this could be resentment this could be ugh, if only or she's still holding on to that grief now, the only thing that would help me know that for sure is when her father passed. I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not sure if Joy mentioned it. I'm kind of dusty there, a little cloudy. Maybe you guys could remind me if it is in the first episode. Uh, but if I knew when her father died, it would, it would probably, because if it's been months and this stress here is be due to that, then she's real angry. Or, you know. Pragmatically speaking, this could just be because the park shut down, she runs the finances, the bills. I mean, you lose a lot of money as an amusement park if, you know, 
you're shut down for a long period of time. That could be very stressful. It's just got some mints here, too. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we won't touch anything else. Even though I am, like, very curious here. Now, hold on. Okay, here's the original ballroom. Do you see them putting in any floor panels? No. Huh. Okay. I was gonna say, maybe we could have found the construction images of this basement we're unaware of. Oh, in here. 1983. Okay, so even sooner. Okay. So Ingrid was nowhere to be seen at that time. She was off in an early part in her journey. An early chapter. <clears throat> she could have been little at that time, actually. Okay. So Joy is not around. Ingrid. How about we give... Oh, Hello? I was just gonna say! Hi, Let's give this someone a call. You know, I just had a thought. There's a newspaper article and photo in Joy's office that I want you to be sure to take a look at. They're in a frame on the wall. Yeah. I may have seen them. Yeah. What are they about? They're a little piece of park history. The guy in the photo found a bunch of jewels that had been stolen in a heist years ago and stashed away on one of the rides at Captain's Cove. The police said there was a good chance more jewels would turn up. Interesting. Huh. See, okay, and this leads into... Maybe that's why someone stole the car. Sorry, because there was it hidden inside it. See? This is what I'm saying. I really think there was jewels inside of that horse. Because I get it. The value of the horse itself is pr probably... <clears throat> pardon me. Probably pretty high up there because it's 90 years old and it's adorned with you know jewels and it's in beautiful condition and the details etc right it's pretty much priceless but if there's jewels inside that significantly increases you know the value of the horse big time maybe that's why someone stole that carousel horse because there were jewels hidden inside it my thoughts exactly okay we're I all on the same page great <laughs> his name is kj paris he's going uh. to call you oops i gotta run i just wanted to give you a heads up all right goodbye paula is he gonna call me right now no okay well maybe we have his number do we have his number captain's co pd frank and joe hardy we should probably call everyone yeah let's call captain's co pd first Captain's Cove Police Station. Detective Paris, please. Hang on. Oh, there we go. This is KJ. Oh, he's an old man now. It's been about 25 years. Uh, turn up Paul's and us figure out what's been going on. Horse uh, gets stolen. The roller coaster suddenly stops. Uh, my name is Mr. I'd like, uh, I'd like to ask you some questions about a jewel heist. An old jewel heist, the one where the safe at the Captain's Quarters Hotel was broken My into? name is Nancy Drew. I'd like to ask you some questions about a jewel heist, an old jewel heist. The one where the safe at the Captain's Quarters Hotel was broken into? Oh, you are going back away. I know he's going to say that. You a reporter that. or something? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I'm a detective. I'm a detective. Do you remember the case? Oh, sure do. Mostly because it was only half solved. Knew who oh. the was, but never recovered all the loot. Bugs me to this day. Interesting. Well, who was the perp? That could help us. I'm trying to help Paula Santos figure out what's many things. And I think what happened back then might have something to do with... Yes. I think what yes. happened back then might have something to do with what's been going on at Captain's Cove now. Big stretch. Oh, yeah? So what do you need? It just so happens oh. Paula Santos is a good friend of mine. Ah. Uh, oh, pardon me. Since everything seems to start off with the theft of the carousel horse. Ah, Since yes. everything seems to have started with the theft of that carousel horse, I'm wondering if maybe it was stolen because there were jewels from that heist hidden inside it. Hmm. Never occurred to me, but it's possible, I suppose. The thief's name was Chaz Dunning. Chaz he died in prison Dunning. about a year ago. Oh. I'll tell you what. 
I'll make some calls, try to see if there was somebody he confided in before he died. Oh, somebody thank you. Somebody who was recently released. Very good. Yes, that would be fabulous. Again, my name is Nancy Drew, and you can reach me on my cell phone anytime. The number is 523-555-4399. Oh. Well, as soon as I know something, you'll know something. Thanks, Detective Paris. It was great talking to you. Ditto. <laughs> um... Okay, so that number on her phone is her number. I love that. You know, all I want right now, all I want right now is a recreation in my hand of this cell phone that I could use every single day. I would throw this iPhone into the lake like right now if if this phone showed up at my, in my mailbox. I swear to you, I'm not even kidding about it. Not only that... But the PDA from Ghost Dogs and Moon Lake, oh my god, I, sh I want both so bad. And just, yeah, that, that's what I want. <laughs> that is what I want. It's so cool. This is simple times, man. Frank and Joe Hardy. Hello? Hey, Frank, it's Nancy. Hey, Joe, pick up. Actually, he may not want to talk to you. Why not? Why? Because you get to solve a mystery at an amusement park. <laughs> He's so jealous he could spit. Hi, this is Joe. Hey, Joe, it's Nancy. I don't want to talk to you. What did I tell you? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Pardon me for a second. I gotta go spit. Quit fooling around, <laughs> Joe. He's calling long distance, remember? Sorry. So what's going on? <laughs> Sorry, I have to go spit. Oh, gosh. Do you... Yeah, do you guys know much about remote control devices? Do you guys devices? know much about remote control devices? I had a toy car that used one until Frank broke it. Ancient history, Joe. Let it go. <laughs> Why do you ask? Uh... Right. I forgot about that with the surveillance tape, the static just before... When I saw a tape of the carousel going around by itself, there was a very brief burst of static just before the carousel started up. Electrical interference consistent with someone using a remote control device. Okay. If that's the case, there has to be some kind of electronic device that transmits as well as receives near or maybe even attached to the carousel. I haven't checked out the carousel's machinery mm. yet. Make sure you look hard when you do, Nancy. The device is probably pretty small. Okay. Okay. Sorry, that was a lot to take in. Logical interference, yes. See, I was trying to think, again, pragmatically about you know, the static. I thought maybe it was just because they reused the tapes over and over and over. Because they did mention that. Harlan did mention that. Huh. But if that is something that's consistent with someone using a remote control device, then that definitely thickens the plot here. Okay. So we're definitely going to have to get into that, into that carousel. Uh, hmm. His neck injured and was filed a lawsuit. <laughs> I love how that's not really like important to the case, but Nancy does like to spill the tea about some of the stuff that we learn along the case. Apparently, one <laughs> of the people who was on the roller coaster when it suddenly stopped is claiming that his neck got injured and has filed a lawsuit. <gasps> tea. Well, boys and girls, can you say insurance fraud? <laughs> what if someone is making up a false claim? What if that was his plan oh, all along? Joe. And what if someone in the park is in on the scheme with him? That person oh. causes the accident, the guy sues, they split the settlement. New word, boys oh. and girls, can you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Joe. God, this is hilarious. Um, yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's very, um, oh, that's a very smart perception because if he was working with someone on the inside, huh, yeah. The person that works there caused the accident. The guy sues. Mm. That all adds up. That clocks out. I got busted while snooping in Joy's office by a talking computer. <laughs> her computer talks? It's not her computer. It's this weird looking thing. It's like somebody threw a bunch of junk together and <laughs> somehow programmed it to see, hear, and speak. Where do you think it came from? <laughs> well, she didn't get it at Radio Shack, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, too good. Well, she didn't get it at Radio Shack, that's for sure. I had a talking computer once. Remember, Frank? That wasn't a computer. It was a plastic keyboard with a tape player inside. 
Which you never should have left on the stairs for somebody to accidentally step on. Bigfoot. Joe. Bigfoot. <laughs> okay. Let's see if... Yeah, I was gonna say, where's the hand? Any suggestions as to my next move? Now is your chance to make like Lewis and Clark. And do what? Discover the Northwest Passage? Explore, Frank. <laughs> they were explorers. Oh, I didn't know that either. Hey, I'm with Frank on that one. I better get going. <laughs> Call us anytime. Take care. Thanks, guys. Okay, well... <sighs> I guess there's oh Bess. Let's call Bess. She's probably with George. Hopefully. Hello. Hey Bess, it's Nancy. Oh, hey Nancy. Oh, whoa! You were obviously hoping I was someone else. Well, kinda. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So who is he, and where'd you meet him? Oh, Nancy. His name's Matt, and he is so cute. He works the concession stand at the movie theater in the mall. A cute guy with an endless supply of gummy bears and butter There's flavoring. George. Right at his fingertips. <laughs> We're talking major crush. Hey, George. Good. You're there, too. Barely. I almost got caught standing between Bess and the phone just now. When it rings, she's like a one-woman cattle stampede. <laughs> oh. Oh. Do you have time to talk? I mean, I want to mess this. Do yeah, you have time yeah. Time to talk? No. I mean, I don't want to mess up this Matt thing. Of right. course we have time to talk. I'm dying to hear what's going on. Besides, if Matt tries to call me and gets a busy signal, that's a good thing. He'll think I'm popular. Fill us in, Nance, quick, before Bess's uh, logic starts getting really twisted and I get nauseous. I wish we still ha I wish this was all, all still relevant today. Even just the way they're talking. Today it'd be like eight swear words and some kind of slur and this. Ugh. <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, yeah, let's catch him up. I met the security guard, Harlan Bishop. Nice guy. Except when I asked him where he worked before. He seemed kind of evasive. Is he cute? Mm. Pess, what difference <laughs> does that make? Ugly people have chips on their shoulders and are more likely to commit crimes, George. <laughs> I read that somewhere. Either read it or saw it on Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Oh, I'm certainly loving this this mystery for its humor big time what a contrast to our our previous scary mysteries <laughs> serious mysteries uh he's from new jersey i'm pretty sure about that give me a pass lets me run all the rides and play on all the games midway unfortunately hmm best will like that because then she can she'll probably examine new jersey oh and then probably bring up the accent but if I say this, let's just... He's from New Jersey. I'm pretty sure about that. Well, I guess that's not surprising. But if he was evasive, we know what that means, don't we, Bess? Suspect list. Yes, sus. Mm -hmm. You girls are right, because... I never thought about that, though. How evasive, uh... How evasive Harlan was being. I didn't pick up on that. Hmm. So maybe if he... He didn't touch on his previous jobs. I wonder if he worked here this whole time and was the one helping, if that theory is correct, if he was the one helping. Did I just flash everybody? Okay, good. No, I didn't. <laughs> I keep forgetting it's a crop top. I was just getting itchy under there. <laughs> um, felt a little breeze. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, let's tell them about our theory here. Or I was saying something about, I forgot, it's gone. Brain, train, gone. Train, brain, gone. Mm -hmm. I think I might know why somebody stole that horse off the carousel. They were looking for jewels that had been hidden inside it after a hotel robbery. Hidden jewels? I love it. Right? It's almost as good as buried treasure. But if they Better. recovered the jewels, why is the carousel still going around by itself? I'm not sure yet, but the detective who was in charge of investigating the robbery is helping me look into it. Don't let George discourage you, Nancy. I, for one, think you're on the right track. You can never go wrong when jewelry is involved. Interesting. I wonder if when the carousel's moving, if that's meant to be a distraction. If Frank and Joe are right about the remote control device, maybe the remote control device sets it off. All the park or the staff are focused on that section and they go to an opposite section to, you know, fiddle around in their in their culprit little ways. <laughs> but what's on the opposite side of the carousel? 
I'll have to look at the map after this. Well, we're at Ingrid's right. I don't know. I will have to check that though. I have to remember. I hope I remember that. All right, let's see here. Uh, what else do they? Oh, we got a lot to tell them. Did I tell you that I met the park's chief engineer? No. Is he cute? Well, for starters, Bess, Ingrid Corey is a she. That's cool. <laughs> Does she know her stuff? Oh yeah. Doesn't seem to know where the blueprints for the roller coaster. She seems smart. Yes, she does. Yes, she told me with a totally straight face that the park was cursed. Cause of the curse. Roller coaster accident, result of the curse. Huh. True. And she was pretty passive about it. But that just seems like her persona. She doesn't let things kind of affect her. And she lets it go and just in the moment and moves on. You know? I don't know. That is interesting, though, that the blueprints Seems to, aren't to Although she for. doesn't seem to know where the blueprints for the roller coaster are. Uh oh, hiding something, perhaps? Looks like your list of suspects just got longer. Maybe. Oh, look at this! And Nancy's mentioning the brochure for the sports car. We we just discussed that. Okay, let's see what she thinks. There was a brochure for a sports car in Ingrid's work area, the Pandora Two XS. That is like the hottest car ever. Oh. One of the most expensive, that's for sure. <gasps> okay. She must make okay. a ton of money. Either that or she's about to come into a ton of money. Hmm. The engine oil thing. <laughs> <laughs> that it does, George. That it does. And I didn't want to think she was sus. I was trying to, like, give her the benefit of the doubt, but... That is a good point. And the fact they're all mentioning it here, Nancy kept that up here. Yeah. A little sus. Hmm. I need you guys to do something for me. I found some stenography notes that I'd really like to translate, only I don't know shorthand. Say no more. We'll do some research and get right back to you. We will? I barely know how to spell stenography, <laughs> let alone research it. We'll call you when we're through. We can do this, Bess. What is with all this we stuff? <laughs> Joy Trent has a computer in her office that sees, hears, talks, and interrupts people when they're snooping. And you, of course, were snooping. Well, <laughs> that's our girl. Why does she have such a sophisticated computer? This thing is not that sophisticated. In fact, it mm. looks like it was made out of spare parts. Yeah. Do you think Joy made it? I doubt it. Well, mm. the next time it catches you snooping, just smile sweetly, then rip its little plug right out of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> True. We did try that. We did try that. We tried to run out of, run it out of its batteries. It's battery powered. Right. It's battery powered, Bess. Uh yeah, what kind of hints do you guys have in store Got for? Got anything me? for me in the way of hints? While you wait for Joy to call Elliot, maybe you should do some exploring. Catch you guys later. Hasta la vista. You're doing great. Aw, uh, thanks guys. Oh we're good friends. They are great friends to have. Bess and George. Unarmed. Okay, I wonder if Ingrid's in here. Yes. Hello, Nancy. Still on the case, I see. Thanks for your help. No big deal. No big deal. Um, it would have been nice to get a soldering gun from her. Uh, but it doesn't seem like... Because we can't... Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. We can't fix the machine. Like, we can't fix this until we have the soldering gun. Hmm. Uh. Oh. Let's not talk to him. Let's, let's, let's just look around first. I didn't think that was possible. <gasps> There's a pair of pliers. Ingrid needs a pair of pliers. And honestly, I would be willing to steal for her right now. <laughs> I don't know if I should go touching things. I might lose a sh Wow, 360 board feet. That's a lot of wood. Holy cow, what? Star lumber. Okay. A thousand dollars for all that wood. And plus shipping and tax, it's still only... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm comparing it to today's prices for lumber, especially after COVID. For one piece of wood. I just show this to my dad. He would freak. daddy -o would look at this and go, what? Get all that wood for 
Well, I guess there's some measurements here. It might be a specific $2 a board foot. I wonder, you know what? I'm gonna take a picture of this right now for Daddy-O. <laughs> I never do this, but this is important. Important, you see. Daddy-O needs to tell me. <laughs> it's, it's important to our case. Well, not really. I'm just curious because the price seems so low. Because today that would probably be like, I'm guessing, five grand, six grand, seven grand maybe. It's like ten grand just to build a deck these days, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I will get in touch with Daddio, and I will return to you guys with the deets. <laughs> Even though it's not important to the case. It's it's a little side note. Fun fact. Get to the bottom of it. Alright. We are definitely taking that. <laughs> taking that with us. The music's getting ominous in here. I don't like it. Alright, I'm just going to try turning it on. Ah. Why would he put tape on it? Oh, maybe to create like a white noise to keep him calm and relax, maybe? Plausible. Do you always go poking around in other people's stuff? <laughs> Ooh. Actually, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm a detective, you know. It's my job wow, to go a lathe. poking around. A lathe. Oh my gosh, daddy -o would love this. A lathe. I should, I should take a picture of that too and tell him I think I found your the right mystery for you. <laughs> Although you can't really you can't use it, <laughs> but it's there. Okay. I don't want to talk to him yet. Mind if I look at this? No, go right ahead. Okay. A book on <laughs> carousels. Cool. Oh. Oh! Oh! We're out of time, folks. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry, I, I ain't stopping just yet. We are on a roll here. Not really, I mean, we've just been exploring, but still. The golden age of carousels began in the late 1800s and ended in the early 1930s with the Great Depression. That makes sense. Uh, during that period, three different carousel styles emerged. Oh, okay, okay. To the trained eye, these styles are distinct as, as distinct as a fingerprint. Fantastic factoid. See, I, I love the fa fun facts, side facts, unknown facts, you know, little known facts and stuff. So we jump in here first. <coughs> Hold on. Not yet. That's better. The horse on the outside, just in front of the chariot on the carousel, is called the lead horse. This horse is usually the biggest and most exquisitely carved horse on the carousel. Okay. Just in front of the chariot. Hmm. I never knew that. That is a fantastic factoid. <laughs> oh, there's another one up here, too. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> the horses that Charles L.D. Loof... <laughs> Carved. Is that a real name? I mean, it's a cool name, but that's funny. Loof. Carved tended to be very fanciful with flashy, often jewel encrusted saddles and bridles. M.C. Illions. <laughs> millions. <laughs> M.C. Illions. Millions. <laughs> I think that's a play on. On words now is this name too because you know you know her interactive likes to play like that Charles Loof Chittle 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 <laughs> no okay if y'all know if there's a funny meaning pun to these names let me know that one seems like millions and Charles Carmel that seems like a normal name also carved horses cool name actually Carved horses that were less than realistic, frozen in highly animated poses. Oh, okay. Actually, often jewel crest saddles and bridles. Also, carved horses that were less than realistic, frozen in highly animated poses. 
Liechtenstein and Goldstein carousel horses were known of their big buckles and lack of forelocks. Okay, so I think we are dealing with a Coney Island style horse because we do have the realistic or less than realistic frozen po animated poses. The zebra I keep mentioning <laughs> and his little laugh <laughs> and the teeth showing in that. I mean, zebras don't laugh or maybe they do. Who knows? Oh, and my phone's vibrating here or something just vibrated. That was a little ominous. And highly animated clothes. So yeah, definitely Coney Island style, I think. Fantastic factoid. Some carvers carved only the heads and let other craftsmen carve the rest of the horse. Oh, interesting. Huh. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. You spend all those hours, maybe days, maybe weeks carving a horse's head. You'd probably be too tired to do the rest. I would, I would, ha I would probably rely on some other guys to help me out for sure. Hmm. Interesting though. Uh, Phil Philadelphia style. These carousel horses were very realistic, with many sporting armor and other mi mili uh, militaristic gear. The carousels that the Denzel Company built often included horses with human faces carved somewhere on their sides. Oh. It's a little bit creepy. The Philadelphia Toboggan Company was not founded by carvers. As a result, its carousels displayed many variations of the Philadelphia style. Okay. Okay. So they didn't have really the expertise to kind of carve a really uh, uh, bedazzled, you know, kind of over the top extravagant looking horse. So they stuck to kind of the myth the militaristic style okay is there more styles ooh love okay fantastic factoid most horses that are mounted on permanent carousels have tails made of real horse hair interesting huh interesting daniel and alfred muller of dc muller and row company were famous for their exceptionally intricate and realistic carousel figure, figures. One of the company's founders, Daniel Muller, is often said to be the most, is the best carver of carousel horses ever. Those familiar with Rolf Kessler's work might disagree. Oh. Driven by dark moods and odd convictions, Kessler worked by himself, creating carousels on a freelance basis. Oh. Huh. Some people found the intense expressions of Kessler's creations to be a little too realistic. Oh! Hmm. But that's the same style. We're still continuing from... Uh-oh, uh I can't go back. We're still continuing from the Philadelphia style, I guess. Okay. Uh, county fair style. A number of companies specialize in carousels that could be effortlessly moved from one place. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be the one we're used to, that we see at, you know, um, seasonal fairs and whatnot, traveling carnivals and that. I know where I live here in Canada, in Ontario, uh, Central Ontario, we do a lot of, every fall, there's always um, kind of like traveling carnivals and fairs that we have, because there's a lot of small towns around here. Um... And I think the farthest you'd really have to go, like if you drove, the farthest you'd have to drive is maybe an hour. That's the farthest one. So like, and then there's like four or five in between all throughout the weeks because they travel, right? So they stop all the way through. So you could go to all the, I grew up going to all these carnivals, all these fun fairs growing up. And and the, it was the county fair style carousels you would see, um, as well as obviously the other rides too, but. I don't think that's a picture representing it. Uh, fantastic factoid. A carousel horse was carved out of many pieces of wood that were held together with glue and small dowels. Never nails because they would rust. A horse's leg could be made out of as many as six pieces of wood. Interesting. You want to know why? Thank you, fantastic, f fantastic factoid. Because... When we were in Chan's, we're still in Chen's office. He has an order for three hundred and sixty 
whatever it was, pieces of wood, of uh, one inch or something wood. And if he needs up to six pieces of wood just for a leg, okay, all right, let's do that math real quick. I don't think this is cheating. I think this is just figuring it out because I know I never usually use my calculator and I do feel a little bit of guilt jumping on my phone here, but I want to kind of figure this out. Horses leg could be made of as many as six. So let's, let's say that each leg, there's four legs on a horse. So six times four, there's 24 pieces of wood for the legs alone. Okay. Huh. I wish it would tell us how much wood it would take for the rest of the horse. Because 24 pieces, like planks of wood for one foot, that's, that's a lot of wood. Oh, here we go. To another. The carousel horses they created were relatively simple in appearance, so they could be produced quickly and moved with minimal breakage. Uh, Armitage, Herschel, and Spillman were known for this style. And the carousels of the C.W. Parker Amusement Company were seen throughout the American heartland in the early 1900s. Um, yes, that's probably what we see here in Canada, still to this day, getting past right. There is one carousel, actually, at the one fair when it comes around. And they specifically go to this uh, field to set up because there is a permanent carousel there, actually. And it's in a small town called um, Roseneath, Ontario. And it is permanently there. It's it's encased in a beautifully uh, designed wooden... It's, it's fairly simple, but still, to me, beautifully designed wooden enclosure. So it's inside. Um, so when you're in there, the music reverberates off the walls and it's all original. So I'm going to actually, this fall, I want to make it a point to go so I can take pictures um, of the horses and share with you guys. And we can see what kind of style it is. I'm pretty sure it's the one mentioned here. But it'd be interesting to uh, to share that. Because I, I can't picture what they look like. The horse. I didn't really go in there too often. I like the exciting fun rides. I wasn't much of a carousel rider as a kid. But these days, I think I really appreciate it. So especially just the style and stuff. Especially after learning all this today. So I will remember. Someone write that in the comments, please. Hey! You're supposed to take pictures of the carousel, Rose Neath. <laughs> And I'll remember. I'll write it down. Oh, excuse me. Horses were carved out of soft hardwood, like base, base wood. This wood is soft enough to carve easily, but hard enough to stand up a lot of wear. Okay. What wood was it? Oh, we can't even look at it. Okay. Fantastic fun factoid. The side of the horse that faced out and was most seen by the public was called its romance side. Ooh, I like that. Since it was the most visible side. Excuse me. It usually included much more detail than the inner side. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, history of the carousels. Carousels or merry-go-rounds evolved from games people in the Middle Ages used to play on horseback. Oh, is that right? Huh. In the 12th century, the Spanish named one of these games Carousella, which meant little war. Stop this. That's cool. By the 17th century, so the 1600s, carousel, with an extra R, among French royalty meant a festive day of contests on horseback. I like that. In one of these contests, riders would try to spear a small ring with their lance while galloping past it at full speed. To practice for this event, noblemen would straddle a wooden horse, that hung from an arm that was attached to a center pole as the center pole and arm turned, powered by horse, mule, or servant. Ah, I see how this is coming together now. The rider would try to spear a small stationary ring mounted on the outside of the machine. Eventually, the word carousel referred to this machine rather than the pageant on horseback that inspired it. Oh, I like that. By the mid-1800s, men, women, and children of all social classes classes were clamoring to ride the contraption, which by this time included several rows of wooden horses. Innovations occurred rapidly after the carousel became oh, steam-powered. Okay, interesting. Uh, early 20th century duh, 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 rode the carousel for the cool breeze it generated and for the thrill of riding something going fast, <laughs> seven miles per hour. That must have been pretty fast for them back then, though. Like, even a car, you hear some, um, 
I've watched, I love the show. I love period uh, shows and movies that depict an earlier time. You know, Downton Abbey, one of my all time favorite shows. But there is a show lesser known on that was on PBS or CBS or something called uh, Mr. Selfridge with Jeremy Piven uh, as Mr. Selfridge. And there is a scene where one of his associates, he has a big family and he's able to, ha to buy a car for the first time. And the kids are going, oh, this is so fast, dad, go faster. And the guy said, the father says, oh, well, I can't go too much faster. We'll be passing 40 miles an hour. <laughs> and just, or 30 something miles an hour, something like that. So to them, 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour was so freaking fast that the police would pull you over and say, whoa, slow your horses, <laughs> sir. But yeah, so interesting to think about when I heard that. Uh, in the episode, I just, I kind of chuckled. I thought, wow, you know, how simple those times were. That something like even going 40 miles an hour was such a thrill, you know? So I, it's interesting that even seven miles per hour on a horse, I'm sure that must have been such a great breeze on a hot day. I'm not flashing again, am I? <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, we've read that. Carousel horses were often named. Their names would appear on the inside. We did see that. Uh, German in 1870, and by the early 1900s, the carousel looked pretty much the way it does today. Mm. It's interesting to note that English carousels rotated clockwise, while American, well, carousels in America and the rest of Europe rotated in a counterclockwise direction. Why is that? This is because the English thought it was important that riders be encouraged to mount from the proper side, the horse's, ah, horse's left side. Also, the game of trying to grab the brass ring was never popular in England. In the United States, moving counterclockwise allowed the carousel riders to use their right hands to reach, okay, cool. I like, <clears throat> I like how much we're learning about this. You can never, you can always rely on Nancy Drew Games to, to teach you something interesting, you know, some fun facts and some really interesting pieces of history. They never fail to do that. That's why, another reason why I love Nancy Drew Games. <laughs> Fantastic factoid. The horses on the outside are bigger and more ornate than the horses on the inside, so they can be seen from a distance and will attract potential customers. Very true and very smart. Menagerie, 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 menagerie figures such as tigers, dogs, giraffes, and even frogs were found alongside horses on carousels in the late 19th century. But by 1920, these figures were on the way out because the carousel makers realized that many children were frightened of them and preferred to ride horses. Huh. I could see that. Interesting. What is a band organ? By 1920, most carousels in the United States... I didn't realize this book was going to be so long, you guys. And the episode ended forever ago, but <clears throat> we'll get through it. We'd have to read it at some point, so... <laughs> My throat's giving out, though. I'm running out of... Ah! <laughs> I'm going dry. I'm very dry in the throat. By 1920, most carousels in the United States were treating their customers not just to a cool, refreshing breeze as they rode, but to the bright, lively sounds of the distinctly American invention known as the band organ. Huh. Is that the automatic playing? A band organ is a mechanical device, meaning that someone doesn't have to play it, rather it produces music by mechanical means. In very simple terms, air supplied by a bellows at the bottom of the organ is forced through the pipes, which produce musical notes in relation to holes punched in a roll of paper. Ah, so the kind of thing we see in um, old westerns or even just the wild. Actually, I think we saw it in uh, Secret of Shadow Ranch when we go to Old Hill. No, nope. that old town. <sighs> Something Hill. No. Someone will mention below in the comments. But that old dust town, or dust town, ghost town, <laughs> in the one saloon in uh, Perky's, no, Chippies, Chappies. Ah, oh, wasn't that long ago. Come on. Anyways, in there, 
there was a piano with that same mechanical uh, a band organ, but in a piano. So it, it, I guess uh, even back then in the 1870s, so this must have been, you know, ah, we can make a band organ like that by 1920 anyways. 1870s, 80s was probably where it was first like, whoa, the piano's playing by itself? You could have probably played a lot of tricks on your friends back then, like, <gasps> I don't know how it's doing that. No piano does that. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> that'd be fun. A lot of opportunity for pranks there. Victorian pranks, <laughs> the late 19th century. Um, right, a variety of pipes can be activated at one time along with drums and cymbals. Okay, so we're getting a little more advanced by the 1920s. So that the music sounds much like that of a small military band, hence the name band organ. Many people think the music they hear when they ride a carousel is calliope music. What's calliope music? A cal oh, here we go. <laughs> Spoke too soon. A calliope, however, is a totally different machine designed to attract attention. The high-pitched flute-like calliope oh, tones or calliope, calliope tones, right. Cali from Grey's Anatomy, Cali O'Malley, Calliope, yes. Okay, beautiful name actually. Tones are usually heard at the circus. Some antique band organs house speakers. Oh, simply broadcast pre-recorded music. Oh, boring. <laughs> so much magical though back then, you know what I mean? Like we can hop on a carousel today even and it's just got, you know, the recording and the not so detailed horses and, you know, probably kind of dirty, not kept up. But imagine riding a carousel in like 1915, you know, or 1908 or 1890. Well, we wouldn't get all this. So 1925, let's say. Oh, again, simpler times, better times. <laughs> Uh, well, in others, the pipes are activated according to digitally recorded patterns. Hmm. Okay. Some band organs can go back and forth between the old way of playing tunes and the new. Okay, best of both worlds. New improving, in, oh, sorry, new. Improving the likelihood that as long as there are carousels, there will be band organ music. Very interesting. Thank you for that, Mr. Melvin A. Schwartz. <laughs> Any more books before we say goodbye today? <laughs> no. Okay. And uh, we will talk to you another day. Oh. <gasps> What's this? <gasps> Could I have some of these tissue strips? Be my guest. Okay. I don't know why we need them, but yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chen. Oh, and a soldering... Would it be okay if I took some tape? It might come in handy. Help yourself. Oh, okay, tape. But we need a soldering gun. <gasps> I can use this to measure. Measure what? I can use this to measure. I can use this to measure. Okay. Measuring what exactly is the question? Uh... Okay. Okay, not much else to see here. However, those pliers, I'm still thinking about those pliers. I wonder if they're Ingrid's. And I can't just like grab them and run. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> All right, back to the hotel. Oh, Hello. here we go. Hi, Nance. We found some stuff on stenography. Oh, that was quick. So now it's we, huh? Okay, George <laughs> found most of it. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I helped. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. So go back to the hotel and check your laptop. We emailed a little tutorial to you, but you gotta promise to let us know what the note you translate says. I promise. Thanks again, you guys. Absolutely. We certainly will. Oh, it looks busy in there. I didn't see the people. <sighs> All right. Well, we'll we'll look at that next time. Yeah, we'll save that little juicy bit for next time. And of course, we'll face our phony knockoff television. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this is a pretty good episode, you guys. A little longer. We trailed on a little bit reading that book. But I do not regret it for a moment because we learned a lot of cool stuff about carousels. A lot of stuff I, I didn't know about before. Now I just hope that this brain of mine retains all that information. <laughs> I've been bad. I've been, uh, uh, what's the word? 
I've been fluent in the language of not remembering things or saturating newly found information. Is that does that sound right? Anyways, <laughs> my brain is just shrinking. That's that's the basic way to put it in a nice high horror lift. Case in point. Um, nicest way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, we have, we've discovered quite a lot so far. I'm very curious still, you guys, about the sounds underneath the floorboards in the haunted house. That was very peculiar. Someone's down there working. And again, I would, I, I would suspect that maybe it's people trying to get a head start on the work since taking the opportunity, you know, the pro that the, the, the park is closed, so the rides are closed. So it gives them an opportunity um, at, their, at their leisure, right? At their own leisure to uh, inspect the rides or fix them, adjust them, you know, what have you. Um, however, that was a lot of work. We heard hammers, we heard nails, we heard sandpapering, we heard uh, a saw, we heard a few other things too, bangs and drills and whatnot. I don't know if we heard a drill. Did we hear a drill? I can't remember. But a lot of suspicious activity, especially because, now that's where I was going with that, is I, I, I kind of figured, pragmatically speaking, that it's one of those people, right? One of those members of the park, uh, staff of the park working on that. However, why would you be doing that underneath the Haunted Museum? Because if there was a staircase going down and a sign, you know, watch your step, whatever, that's open, that's out in the open, and everyone can knows it's there, can go there if they'd like to, whatever. Or knock and say, hey, need any help? But then we discovered that panel, the hidden panel that squeaks on the stage just past the uh, sea creature. <laughs> and uh, so that would lead me to suspect that maybe that's an opening leading down to wherever this thing is. So why would you be doing that in private? Why would you have to work on the equipment or work on the uh, the parts of the uh, the rides with your equipment underneath like that. No one can get to you, you know, like nobody knows you're down there. Or if nobody does know you're down there, what if you get hurt? You know, what if you hurt yourself? That's not smart, not smart at all. No one's gonna know if you're bleeding out or if you've, you know, nailed yourself by accident with a nail gun. Jesus. Or perhaps, you know, you accidentally sawed off a pinky finger. Oh my goodness. Good heavens. Not smart at all. <laughs> uh, well, we find out who that is. That's the first thing I'm going to... I mean, I'm not a mother, but <laughs> that's a motherly thing, you know. Smarten up. <laughs> you need to get your act together. Jeez. Louise. <laughs> Alright, guys. We have had way too much fun today. Is that even a thing? Way too much fun? Nah. Nah. But we spent too much time. Time is the thing that is rare. Uh, it's uh, not a commodity. It is something to treasure. But fun! We can do that all day long. And I'll probably, I hope you have fun the rest of your day. So on that note, <laughs> great Lou into... You know where I'm going with this. Do it with me now. Come on, y'all. Do it with me. Toodles for now. Ta-ta. Ciao. Till next time, guys. Love you lots. Howdy, folks. Did you like that video? Well, then why don't you go ahead and give that thumbs up a smackaroo. Don't want to miss out on the next episode? Give the subscribe button some love and make sure to turn your notifications on. That way I can give you a bell a ring, let you know when it is served. Still need more to chew on? Take a bite of my new YouTube Instagram account at TravyJ Space to keep up to date with the channel's inner workings and news of upcoming projects and episodes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.